If you want to understand the birth of Portland, start here at the 1857 Halleck and McMillan Building on the corner of Southwest Oak and Nato in the Skidmore Old Town Historic District. It tells a great story, I think, that's important and, and isn't out there right now. It is an important chapter of our city's history and it just embodies so much of the roots of the community which started right there along that stretch of avenue. It was the American dream personified. The story of the Halleck and McMillan building is a story about Portland's first commercial brick building and the rich history of cast iron architecture. It's also a story of the patience and perseverance shown by owner John Russell and his team of craftspeople in restoring the Halleck and McMillan building to its 1857 glory. Brick was fireproof and the cast iron protected even the openings from fire. If you build a brick building, it was a very big deal. And 1857, the city was only a dozen years old, just stump town, dirt streets. Remarkable that they had masons that could do that level of detail. These leaves are pretty standard as far as this type of acanthus leaf, which people wouldn't recognize as the one, but in fact it is. In 2011, John and his team started the restoration process by recreating the decorative design elements of the building's facade. Without any original building plans to rely on, architect Bill Hawkins studied high-resolution photographs and other historical documents for guidance and inspiration. Casting the building's decorative pieces the way it was done during the 1850s led John to the Silverton Foundry, where craftsmen transformed sand moldings into cast iron masterpieces. In 2019, the Halleck and McMillan restoration entered a new phase as the team focused on rebuilding the building's brick facade and the reattachment of the decorative cast iron pieces. Pretty much all of the information was lost on the original facade. We're having to recreate all of that, you know, through the design process and an actual physical build process. Every single thing in that building was handmade, from the casting of the iron to the wood windows. The bricks were made locally out of clay and fired here. So the whole building was really a handmade piece. Trying to work with the design intent with the new structural seismic upgrade and keeping it to look historic at the period was a little bit of a challenge. They're labors of love, really, not a way to make a living. And in order to restore each of these buildings correctly, you have to do it precisely right in order not to have the building degrade. It's a significant building in its own way, it's a gorgeous little building. It's very modest. In contrast to its cast iron neighbor that I own, built in the 1880s, which is this exuberant, elaborate, Corinthian column, magnificent cast iron building that was built at the height of that era. And if you see the buildings side by side, which you will, you'll see the evolution of cast iron from the beginning of the Victorian age to the end of it. Pretty cool.
people are absolutely thrilled and amazed at what he's done. The day they put up the cast iron on the building, I received multiple calls and emails from people who were just thrilled that it was finally happening and it meant that you know, I think a corner had been turned. So big kudos to John for this. He has just totally contributed to the retention and the color and authenticity and wholeness of Portland heritage and all that is captured about that in these beautiful buildings. It's um, really something that is bringing back a part of Portland that a lot of people have forgotten about or never knew. The fact that someone has adopted it and uh, will love the building and do it properly is absolutely pivotal. And that has been the case with many of our landmark buildings in the city. All of the buildings that I've developed, whether I developed them new in the case of Pac West, redeveloped them in the case of Tudor Market, or restored them in the case of my historic buildings, they're all potential landmark buildings. That's the contribution I hope to make to the city.